The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, uh, good afternoon, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, <laughs> depending on uh, which time zone you're in. Uh, my name is Krishna Vidula, and uh, I'm here to host this um, uh, this webinar series. So let me just quickly put up my screen and uh, and introduce the um, what we're going to do today. And here is uh, oops, I got the wrong thing up there. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so I I will be the host for this uh, webinar series for for a while now and. Uh, uh, my name is Krishna Vidula from UMass Lowell. I'm also the executive director of IUCE and the past president of IFES. And um, let's see if I can get that next slide. The webinars that we are starting, IFES webinars, which will be one every two weeks approximately. Uh, the vision is to provide a virtual ecosystem that fosters dialogue among communities of global engineering educators to discuss issues relevant to transforming engineering education for a sustainable and peaceful development. So uh, this program will, you know, we have um, put a lot of work in making this uh, move uh, uh, to start this program. And so we have actually almost uh, 10, uh, 10 of these uh, uh, yeah, to, to uh, uh, confirmed. A couple of them still need to get confirmed. And, uh, and, and, and so keep looking for them. It'll be uh, every two weeks. Uh, pretty much the same time, 8 to 8 a.m. Uh, once or twice, they may may change the dates, day day or the other time. Uh, but we have a distinguished panel of people who are confirmed, and uh, so recordings will be available and posted on the IPS website as well as you know, sent to you if you request uh, you know, the thing. Today's topic is uh, peace engineering. Dr. Ramiro Ordan from University of New Mexico, USA, uh, and and the current president of um, of IFES. Uh, he is a, uh, as you can see, is a scientist, innovator, educator, entrepreneur, faculty member of the Electrical Computer Engineering Department at the University of, uh, of New Mexico, and is currently the Associate Dean of Engineering for International Programs, the Associate Chair of Electrical and Computer Engineering Undergraduate Programs. His research activities include sustainability, smart grid, cognitive radio, multidimensional signal processing, and software development. He's president of the International Federation for Engineering Education Societies and the founder of the IBERO. American Science and Technology you know, Consortium. Okay, so uh, uh, I, I welcome Romero. Uh, I am going to uh, just uh, you know, put on his, uh, make him the presenter. Okay, Romero, click show my screen and 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 and, and you can uh, get started. Think you can all see my screen, correct? Yes, correct. If you want to show your face, it? if you want to show your face briefly, I can you know you can press the video. You want to do that? Just say hello to everybody. Oh, I, I don't I, have. A, oh, yeah. You don't. You have that uh, oh, I, webcam. Put on your webcam. You don't have that. No. Yeah, we have Hans Hoyer, who you want to put yourself up as the general secretary. No, of it's, not, it's, it's okay. Okay. It's yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. That's you, you, you look very handsome and good, Krishna. Okay. You're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> Ramiro, I just thought I'd give you guys an opportunity. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Ramiro. Okay, so now I have put it in full screen. So thank you for this opportunity, and I'm going to co uh, continue to talk about peace engineering, what it means. And uh, it was we started this last year during the WEF GDC 2018, and all of a sudden it's just creating a lot of energy and momentum among many, many institutions that are going to, and I also want to invite other ones to join us. So this is the agenda, a little bit of who I am, why I'm doing this, what is this tech, and this is where I started this concept of peace engineering. Then uh, currently, what, 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 how we define peace engineering, why I do it, and uh, why to do it, and challenges, and then uh, again, an invitation for everybody to help us define it and, and, uh, and, and run with it. And again, one more time, thank you for participating. So I'm not going to get into this. Thank you, Krishna, for the introduction. Uh, you did a wonderful job. So why get into this? Well, we're being, I, I see personally that democracy and diversity is being challenged. We need to, we need to do something for the next generation of people 
come. We are facing more and more challenging times. Things are changing. C countries are beginning to compete. Um, uh, we, we wanna, now we're starting to see even tr trade wars. Among, and so the, 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 there's uh, issues with mobility of, of students. New countries are attracting more top students. So talent has been moved from one. So things are being rearranged here. And then I think we need to have uh, to continue push engineering education and change, come up with new, new mindsets so we are more aware of the unintended consequences. And I think it's uh, something that uh, I did with ISTIC is if, to use the language of science integration, science and technology to integrate the world. I mean, physics, math, uh, engineering, uh, we, we all understand, can't, politicians cannot change it. So let me start a little bit with this tech. So this was a crazy idea in June 1990. If you recall, the in internet was in its infancy. So we proposed to Motorola if we can use, if they would fund this educational, engineer education proposal, so we can use the language of science and technology as a catalyst for social, cultural, political, economic development, and again, common language. So Motorola said, that's a crazy idea. Sure, why not? Let's give it a shot. So we targeted the countries of Ibero-America. Okay, so we met with many people, academia, government, industry, multilateral organizations, and they, interestingly enough, uh, they were, uh, they said, yeah, this is a good idea. And let's see if we can work together. And again, this was for, based on engineer education, hands-on, tech transfer, and entrepreneurship. We're talking 1990, okay? So we explored opportunities, we traveled throughout Latin America, and we asked these questions that you see there. Um, you know, is science and tennis a priority? Does research and development, does, is there any way with, does it fit into your, into your socioeconomic development? What's the level of undergraduate, graduate programs? Is the mobility of talent? Again, and if you look at these questions, they're still valid. This is all, almost 30 years after we started this crazy idea called this. So then uh, after all trip that we took throughout Latin America, we invited everybody to come to UNM and we had a brainstorming uh, session and we decided to create this really innovative partnership between industry, academia, and governments, and also some multilateral organizations. So uh, during the trip and also in the meeting, we identified a series of obstacles that we have we have to address at the same time. And if you look at the these issues that I'm, I'm you're, you're looking at, they're still valid. It's a 30 years. I mean, we've seen a lot of change with the internet and all that, but the, there's all, there's so much lack of expertise in the use of information. I mean, there's a lot of countries even with the internet and you know they still don't have access to good and valid information. Um, lack of cooperation in developing critical projects. Uh, there's a lack of confidence among universities, governments. Uh, some regions of the world are still struggling with access to technology. And of course, this the idea of entrepreneurship to bring that crazy idea into the marketplace, it's still not there. So based on those issues, we develop a series of initiatives that ISTIC started working. And these are, every, all of them are based on ICT, or information technology that we call. So we started with, uh, with distance education, double degree programs. We started the, the, a digital library uh, pro, pro, project. We are a founding member of the open software community. ISTIC is one of the four members we signature that we created the open software community. And we have one of the largest collections of digital libraries that we're willing to open and share with anybody. And this is some something that we'll be doing with in Ethiopia very soon with a colleague that we oh, most a lot probably you all know him too, Yakov Astakte. 
we created a series of laboratories with with uh, with companies that there was no technology. Everybody was just doing pen, pen, pencil and paper, put you know, doing very theoretical work. So with companies like Motorola in those days, Nortel, Sun Microsystems, some of them <laughs> don't exist. Um, Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, as I mentioned, Cisco. We created a network over 300 labs so people can do hands-on teaching and, and, and research. We also started uh, uh, tech parks. That's part of Los Libertadores. We started a program with, uh, with health. And then uh, part of the education, which we call Advanced Continuing Education, we launched an, uh, over 14 years ago, uh, Grana, which is uh, a, a truly international accreditation. First of all, we allow, we, we help universities evaluate, assess their, where they are, and then we help them prepare for an accreditation. And if they want to be accredited, Grana can provide that service too. So all of this, and, and there's a lot more, much more but that I can share information later, but uh, we've done a lot in the years. And, and again, Ibero America, and then uh, the companies liked it, the idea that they asked us to go global, and we 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 went global, helping companies and and help universities get uh, information, libraries, technology, labs, help them with the, with uh, with coursework, etc. So they saw that and said, "Okay, Istec was born." So that's the vision of Istec. You can take a look at it. Uh, we want to, of course, improve the quality of life in the, the region. And, that, and here's the mission statement of, of, uh, of uh, uh, ISTEC. Um, we want to advance the state of higher education, science, and technology. We want to promote the cultural quality. So important. It's not just about accreditation. It's about doing good research, good innovation. Um, we want to, of course, disseminate knowledge uh, we want to do tech transfer we, we do encourage joint international research and development and and plant the seed of entrepreneurship and there's we identified two types of entrepreneurship one is social which is greatly needed but this is where we need policies to really uh, create the, the, the ecosystem for innovation and of course a business type of uh, entrepreneurship and yes promote leaders so can I in, so, can I butt in a minute, just a minute here, uh, just for the audience? Yes. Uh, just want to remind the audience that yes. you all are familiar with this feature of questions that you have on the control panel. So please do not hesitate to, to send questions anytime as you hear the presentation, uh, chat, uh, add you know, questions there, and at some point later on we will address them. So just please be active while you're listening to the presentation. But go ahead, yeah. Okay. So uh, that's how this tech was born, uh, a very hands-on project-based. And uh, so 29 years of experience doing this throughout the region. And I, like I said, we started at Bear America, that, and then we went uh, global. So what it was really interesting is using the language of science and technology for collaboration and to integrate the region. So. So then we came up with this theme for the WEF GDP 2018 last year, peace engineering. What is it? We started with a work by Professor Richard Bowen. Uh, he, they organized, uh, there was a symposium in 2004, and then a book came out of that. I mean, very visionary people. And then we said, okay, how, how can we encourage people to get into this? How can we pick their brains and, and get them engaged? Then we came up with a thought-provoking paper that we put on the website for the, when we announced the conference. And this is a paper that was circulated worldwide. And it had a, such a big impact that you'll see that uh, and some of the, the outcomes from the conference, 
you'll see that a lot of institutions took this to start thinking about peace engineering, aligning their strategies and looking at how we can a really better job in engineering education. Okay, so here's kind of a, what it is, but again, it's not every all of this. This is why we need your help to help us define peace engineering. And it's yes, it is about ethics, it's a diversity, it's social justice, social responsibility, again, entrepreneurship, all, all of these uh, uh, topics there that are there in bullets. So from that first symposium that was in 2004, we went to the first global conference on peace engineering. And this is what happened last year, and a lot of you were there, and we want to thank you for, come, for supporting us and participating and helping us define peace engineering. And here are some definitions. You will have access to uh, the, the papers. You will have access to these transparency so I don't want to go through and read them but we're talking very uh, complex system systemic change and it's it's about peacemaking peace building peacekeeping uh, and, and securing communities to to avoid or remove conflict uh, more definitions this is some uh, some papers that I wrote there's also definitions a, a great, great person that started uh, Engineers Without Borders, which is who is Bernard Amade. Very, he's we work very closely with him since since November. We started collaborating very closely with him, and there are other 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 actors too. I'm going to throw this. This is a, a phrase that uh, it occurred to me in one of the ISTA General Assemblies in 1992. One planet, one environment, one chance. I think this is so relevant today. We're all, you know, because of climate change, uh, which is a, should be a priority, uh, you know, we're killing each other. <laughs> and we have to do something about it. So uh, here's another definition. Again, it's, it's about systemic level thinking. It's about uh, all collaborating across borders to, to to address challenging problems that the world is facing. It's, it's independent. All, all these challenges are independent or flags and national anthems. We're all in this together. We're talking about humanity. We need to look, look at our, our, you know, what are we going to leave to the, the future generations? So, uh, like I said, You'll, you will have access to these transparencies and papers, and you can uh, read different definitions of people that have come up for, for peace engineering. But the challenge is, what does it mean to you? And, and if you want to collaborate. So here's a, a core group that all of a sudden started. That was the outcome of the, of the conference, and all of a sudden it started growing. We started in University of New Mexico. We have a great partner one of the 17 national labs, which is Sandia National Labs, their, their strategy is being aligned, which is security, the US security, that strategy is being aligned with peace engineering. They need to educate the current workforce and they're looking for working with new, with universities to generate curricula for the future engineers, to, for them to be more aware of the unintended consequences uh, we don't really pay that much attention. Another great partner is the Peace Innovation Lab at Stanford. Very, very uh, doers. Uh, University of Colorado Boulder. This is uh, Bernardo Made with Engineers Without Borders. We have great partners from Drexel University, uh, Morgan State, which is Jakob. Some of the people you know him. I, uh, we got three new institutions that all of a sudden decided to play with us. Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, Carnegie Mellon University. And then we're beginning to see other institutions now from, from uh, Latin America and other parts of the world. We're organizing a workshop with, in Colombia with the Pontificia Universidad Javeriana. Uh, Soncia University in the UK has contacted us. CERN from a, a European lab and, and other. So again, the question is, do you want to join us? So what are we doing since November? What has happened? Here's this white paper that I was referring to by Sandia. 
That white paper, uh, their strategy with peace engineering, national security has been bubbled up to the Department of Energy. In the state of New Mexico, the idea of peace engineer is being as the new model for socioeconomic development. We have come up with scalable data models so we can measure. Engineering is about measuring. So if we can measure, then we can model, we can simulate, we can do some prediction. And uh, as I indicated earlier, we want to train, the, we have to train the existing workforce and we have to educate the future engineers. So we want to work with many universities to develop and introduce content for the future generations. We have uh, another case study with the Hague, uh, the Dutch government. They want to become the peace capital of the world. Uh, we're launching uh, training for executives and leaders. Uh, we're going to we're using the Stanford Peace Data model so we can measure transactions and look at those transactions, how positive or negative they are, so we can start trying to what we want to do is see, try to predict what conflict will be created. And of course, this is big data, so AI machine learning has to play a role here. I mentioned the Peace, peace Engineering Workshop in Colombia. And then other workshops that will happen this year in Ethiopia and, of course, in Chennai, India at, during WEF 2019. Africa. This, this just caught my attention. Africa now is, begin, is, is, is has the attention of the world, but what's going to happen? I hope it's not just a, another what, a replay of what happened in the past, that, you know, the Rich countries come and take advantage of Africa, and, and, uh, and Africa plays a great, 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 is very important, it's in the radar of, of the world because it's not that what, what people are concerned is, is now the pandemic, diseases that can really devastate humanity, and that, like Ebola. So the, the alarm is, it has, it, it has been, it's beginning to sound. We can hear the sound of, of the alarm. So we need to do something all together. Um, interesting to uh, share with you is the labs, the national labs that we have in, in New Mexico, they do a lot of, you know, of course, strange things. But one of the important things that they invest and do a lot of research is in, in detecting these new viruses or mutation of virus. They're, these are the people that to go in the in the front line. So Africa is something that we need to really focus on. So we do we do need a new mindset in engineering education. So here's a map. I, I don't know if you can see it. This is something that we tried. We work with Sandia trying to put the whole thing together. So there's a grow. We have to grow a community. We need to build a profession. We have to engage and get support to find the discipline. So we're talking complex systems. And I put twice this because I'm having issues with the with uh, resolution. So uh, you know, here's another way of looking at a complex system, uh, the different p pillars of peace. Uh, again, this is in collaboration with the national labs that we're trying to look at how we can uh, avoid conflict, which is the, the important thing is avoid conflict. We also came up with a, a very fine level of measuring uh, projects and, uh, and, the, and, and the impact on, on, on peace. It could be the 17 SDGs of the United Nations. Uh, so we came up with a data model that we can use even for senior design projects that can be used. And this is something that, that it's very aligned with what ABED is looking for now. They just changed from A through K to one through seven. And they're, they're really challenging us to measure, you know, sustainability, with global awareness, it's, and so on and so forth. This is uh, an example of how we can use the peace data standard from, from Stanford, which is being used in big social medias, to detect, to determine the good transactions versus bad transactions. And again, now let's say, why should we do it? Well, we're all responsible for these 17 SDGs. This is the United Nations. We're all in this together, so we need to tackle all 17. These 
SDGs are aligned also with the National Academy of Engineering of the U.S. One of the questions that came up at the conference is, is who are we doing engineering for? Are we really helping the rich get richer and the poor get poorer? So this is something that we need to think about. It. The haves versus the have-nots. This is a this is a chart that's it's, it's just mind-boggling how fast because of the unintended consequences this explosion of innovation and patents and new technology were really devastating the the, the species of the world. What about uh, justice, transparency? What about public health? Right now, more and more, there's more and more data of people dying because of poor quality in the air, NOx or CO2. The big issue of AI is beginning to uh, issues and ethics, the biases that can be introduced, the violation of privacy. This is this is all technology that we created lately in the last 20 years that is challenging us. We're taking the we're challenging democracy. This is why at the beginning I said, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about the challenges and, and diversity and democracy. Here's a book that addresses this issue of AI on how it can be very, very dangerous, how you how you deal with it, how you work with it. And this is of course something that everybody knows. I mean what this is what happened with Facebook. Uh the biases that can be introduced, the invasion of privacy, and, and the challenge to democracy. The other challenge that we have is the refugees. We have more and more of these refugee camps. What, what can we do with them? Can we, can we create jobs for the, the talented people? Can we educate them? Because we, that's a lot of energy in human lives, and that energy we need to challenge in a good way instead of a bad way. So that's what... Uh, we have to look at the unintended consequences. I already mentioned uh, transparency. With all the technology that we have available, it's, uh, it's not, doesn't make sense that we have these issues of corruption. Here's the challenge of, of diversity. I put a, a, a new term there, a photophobia, which is this rejection we have to with the poor people, the homeless. Uh, that's an engineering problem. We need to tackle that. Um, the point I want to make here with this graph is social responsibility. It's not about the corp, just the corporations, the government. That social responsibility has to start with in each of us. And of course, we have to be aware of the future, which is the uh, industry 4.0. Are we aware of what's coming? Are we educating the engineers for this new wave? And are we learning? This is something that I picked up from my good friend, Krishna. And the, the importance of this new mindset. We do educate the engineers, we innovate, we have to solve problems. We do damage and then we have to repair. And we need to bring it back into the education system. That feedback is lacking. And the other thing we need to think is that are we creating conflict by doing this? We don't think about this, these issues. Um, design thinking, of course, is something that we should all embrace. At, at New Mexico, we have, I mean, it's, we need to land. So, uh, you know, we need to walk our talk. So uh, at UNM, we created the Y Lab. Okay, this is where we want to challenge our students and get the, to, to get you know come to grips with their new engineering reality so w stands for what do engineers do h is how the heck do you do that and the y is why is it that i'm taking this course and we're creating more courses to address the issue of peace engineering so these are the four questions that we're addressing we have great partners here we uh, with National Instruments, Quanser, and Math, MathWorks. They're helping us create this uh, lab. And then, of course, 
the, the, the next level is what we call the innovation plaza that was launched a couple of years ago. So we are walking our talk, we are developing content. So I wanna sum it up again. Uh, this is so far what we have learned from since November, new definition from many people that participated. And uh, we still need help from everybody help us to define peace engineering and, and, and do something about it. And I want to thank everybody for uh, participating. And um, thank you, Krishna, for uh, Yeah, this organizing. is fantastic, Ramiro. So we have deliberately kept this speaking part to a, uh, to a short duration because we want to encourage discussion. So what I've done is I've selected some people from the audience and made them panelists, okay? So just to alert you all, you know, just uh, you know, have a discussion on this. I've, I've added Rama Ramakrishna from National Academy of Engineering to be one of the panelists. I've got um, John Tharakan from uh, Howard University, and then I've got Bill Williams, and uh, of course you've got Hans Hoyer and Money with us. And so uh, let, let, let's engage in a little bit of discussion and, 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 and dialogue here because uh, Ramiro has put together a nice um, overview, laid it out. And um, but as engineers, you know, we all have asked ourselves the question now, what do we do? OK, what's the do part of it? You know, what does each one of us do? Uh, what does the, our institution do? What does it mean if uh, one of the participants has asked, uh, Ajit Shukla has asked, you know, how, how do you become part of this uh, uh, this uh, program and and so how you know and so what is the process of doing that and if you do become part of the program what does it mean how does peace engineering differ from humanitarian engineering, humanitarian engineering that many people talk about you know how is it connected to similar programs such as engineering without borders or the grand national grand challenges scholars program that rama ramakrishna heads up and so on so I mean, there's lots of you know stuff in there. Uh, do we do we talk about developing curriculum that can be used by various colleges? So we talk about you know, projects that are done with communities, and uh, you know these students learn to project-based learning by interacting with communities and policymakers and society uh, to to encourage peace to happen. Uh, how, uh, these and all of the above. Uh, I'd, I'd like to have you know everybody you know, the, in the panelists first comment on these. Uh, and, and, and then uh, participants, please feel free to, you know, uh, to jump in and, 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 and uh, make comments. So I'm going to start with, uh, uh, with, uh, with Rama Ramakrishna. Would you uh, like to make, make some comments? Come in, Rama. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, good morning, all, or good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, thank you for a wonderful presentation, Ramiro. Um, I know now a lot more than what we talked last time about this uh, topic. Uh, but my question is, you know, there, is a, there are some other terms uh, uh, that are also being, uh, you know, used, uh, such as the one uh, Krishna also mentioned, humanitarian engineering, and uh, I, know I was part of that program at ASU, and also there is one at Colorado, Colorado School of Mines, and uh, Penn State, and other places. So I just want to kind of see where do you see is it a is it a subset of that humanity broader humanitarian engineering, or you know, there's another term called developmental engineering from Berkeley and. And so I just want to understand exactly what is the meaning of peace. Uh, you know, I know that it, it, it you said it, it is sustainability, security, uh, and generally the, you know, the joy of living, which are the four themes of the Grand Challenges, any Grand Challenges as well. So mm -hmm. I'll stop here and ask for your comments. Yeah, go ahead, Ramiro. No, I think we're all, yes, I think, uh, all, all of these programs are beginning to resonate. This is how I see it. It just so happens that we came up with the, the peace engineering. Um, it was a challenge in New Mexico, okay? New Mexico is the birth of big science. Do you know what that, all that means? You know, the Manhattan projects, and because of that, technology just exploded and, 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 and you know, and communications, computing, and, and all of that. So, by using the language of science and technology, if we can integrate, so this is what I started using in NISTEC, uh, the common language, and, and, and uh, for 28 years we kind of used that, loosely used the term of peace engineering, integrating, working, collaborating, developing joint projects, doing research, entrepreneurship, helping the quality of life and all of that. And then when we saw the opportunity, this is something also for New Mexico and the U.S. to change a little bit, start thinking more about peace, avoiding conflict, because lately it's been kind of crazy. So I think all these programs are are, are, are converging in, in the same thing. Uh, it could be humanitarian engineering, 
uh, I like to call it, for me, it has more impact if I say peace engineering because it's about avoiding conflict and, 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 and dealing with all these grand challenges. But um, I don't see any competition. I see that, that, that something that we can all, uh, it's, it's instead of subtracting. So it's, it's just, it sounds like what you're saying is that, you know, uh, I don't know, that help. It sounds like you're trying to say, you know, both of you are trying to say, we all trying to do the same thing, which is to create a better world. And, and depending on where you're sitting, you might want to use a different word, phrase, or, or concept to work on it. So essentially, it's you know, yeah. educating engineers uh, to be uh, better engineers for right. uh, a better world, right? I'm something, something of that sort, right? Sure. That makes sense? Yes. John? Yes, that makes sense for John me. Tarakan, yes. you want to you wanna add a little bit here? Ta John, come in. Uh, um, Howard, Howard uh, University, he's very active with IU support, John. Good morning, uh, Krishna. Thank you. And uh, Ramiro, thank you for that presentation. That was uh, very interesting. I'm totally supportive of the notion of peace engineering. I, I, I think what I would like to see, though, and I think maybe I had this discussion with Tom Sawyer um, when we were at the IUCE, uh, we're really talking about justice engineering. Uh, one of the development uh, groups uh, in Africa, for instance, has made the theme for going forward uh, technology justice. Um, so, you know, and, and there's the notion that if there's no justice, there's no peace. So, so I, I, I see all of this as, as, as Ramiro said, quite, you know, convergent uh, uh, upon the, uh, the sort of the aim here to have engineers contribute to, as Krishna said, making the world a better place, uh, which means, <laughs> You know, raising up the, the the quality of life and the standard of living for the the, the millions uh, that do not have the access to clean water, do not have the uh, access to safe food, or you know, access to the internet and education and so on and those services. So I I see all of that as as being part of the response really of us as uh, as educators and um, guardians, if you will, of, of of the planet and looking to see it be a better place. Great. Thanks, John. So it looks like we're very specifically, you know, we're talking you know, in terms of specifics. We need to be very thinking about, as, as Rio, Ramiro pointed out, curriculum and, and projects and case studies, right? You want to respond to uh, uh, as a brief response before I go to uh, I'm going to go to Hans Hoyer and Bill Williams for comments after this. Go ahead, uh, Rio. You want? I mean, Rama yeah. Ramiro. No. Anything you want to add? Well, before I go. But, to no, no, no. I fully agree. But, but, but with his comments, I fully agree. I mean, that's why I threw the uh, slide on justice. Mm -hmm. um, we cannot be absent from um, the, the, the policy engine. I'm talking as an engineer. <laughs> we tend to stay away from politics. We don't want to get into policy creation, or um, but we have to get involved. I mean, with all the technology that we have out there, why can't we provide uh, good judicial systems or help other countries create good, clean, and transparent, uh, you know, justice processes or something like that? So the the term of peace engineering is not just about the engine traditional engineering this is not what i just it's not about electrical or chemical engineer it's about changing this mindset with in, in all disciplines we all gotta get involved and we have to do a re-engineering uh, of the justice systems or or the financial systems of the like you, you, he well said i mean how do we provide water to the rest to the, the majority of the people or good health so, so that's the challenge that, the challenge, uh, the challenge that we brought the to challenge. this conference. It's, it's changing the mindset of everybody. It's re-engineering everybody, all the other disciplines too. So essentially you're saying, Ramiro, that we should re-engineer the, the process by which we educate engineers through their courses and through projects which will expose them to this multidisciplinary, multidimensional world of the real world. So Hans, you have comments and then I'll go to Bill Williams. Hans? Uh, uh, Ramiro, thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's very, very interesting to continue to reflect and also learn from your comments. And I've looked at those documents and every time I look at it, I see some, some new insights, but also some new questions. I was just yesterday here at George Mason University. We had a dialogue with a senior vice president at the World Bank engaging in with, with, in a dialogue with 
primarily civil engineers. And I, as you know, as a social scientist, I found the challenge of communication between engineers and non-engineers, maybe the social sciences, economists, anthropologists, whatever, quite a challenge. To me, I see that and working in, in our awesome global engineering community as a continuing challenge that I think we need to, and you certainly touch upon it in your vision, Ramiro, but I, 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 I think it, 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 it remains a, a deep, deep challenge still. And that, that experience uh, yesterday afternoon for the two hours just, just highlighted that to me. The second is builds also on what you just said. Where's the dialogue with policymakers and political leaders? There's a total disconnect because of a variety of cultural and political reasons. And then thirdly, uh, is uh, again, in, in reflection with the World Bank and our connections with the World Bank and UN, uh, how do we link and dialogue with them? Because there are a lot of connections that we can build in terms of our vision to expand that. And the final comment, and, and again, these are not easy solutions. I'm really happy that you are expanding now the network, Ramiro, beyond the United States. I see Europe engaged, of course, our close friend because of the bicultural dimensions, you know, in Ethiopia, uh, other parts of the world. Uh, of course, I saw The Hague as the new capital of peace. Uh, I, I'd like to further what, what exactly that means. I'm not quite sure. But the other six continents and we, in terms of our institutions here, the IFES, uh, the, the GDC and, and others, uh, how, how to continue that dialogue in a, in a really uh, genuine, deeper way in, in all six continents. Let me just stop right here. Okay, thank you, Hans. Bill, would you like to uh, uh, say something, Bill Williams? Yeah, uh, thank you, Ramiro, and and uh, everybody who's contributed so far. I, I found it uh, very interesting. And uh, like John said, it, in many ways, we're talking about issues of, of social just, justice. And uh, uh, I think, Ramiro, you mentioned uh, the question of clean water and also uh, the issue of access to electricity. In engineering terms, access to clean water and, uh, you know, uh, uh, electricity 24 hours a day in your home, you know, they've been resolved a long time ago. But most parts of the world, uh, in the poorer parts of the world, don't have access to clean water and spend a lot of their time. And uh, 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 likewise, access to electricity. So these are problems that in, in, in engineering terms, one would have said that they're solved, but they're not actually solved for millions of people. And Correct. So I think it's, uh, it's like uh, we need to study not only engineering, but uh, engineers in society. It, and like Han said, part of it is to do with communication. But I think there's, there's more to it. Uh, for example, uh, telecommunications ha is an example of technology that has uh, been successfully uh, rolled out to people even in the poorest parts of the world. So, in terms of engineering technology, uh, the, the mobile phones, telecommunications are, are a success, but water, clean water, and access to electricity aren't yet. So, I think. Uh, we need to perhaps study uh, how engineering <laughs> works or doesn't work in, in many societies, many parts of the world, and then see how we can, like you said, uh, Ramiro, feed that in, into our engineering programs. Because we train engineers to think of technical problems, but uh, these uh, have a strong social component as well, don't they? Social justice and uh, social interaction and obviously, uh, like uh, Hans also said, the political aspect. So that's the, the point uh, I, I, I wanted to Excellent point. To well, very well said, Bill. The yeah. whole aspect of engineering problems and oh, the, society. Yeah. Go ahead. Really good comments. Um, yeah. Thank you, everybody. The comments I'm getting is just this is exactly the, 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 the type of uh, dialogue that we want to generate. It's, uh, so it's like, let me summarize it again. We're try, trying to come up with a new mindset where engineering is more than the engineering that we know. We need to 
and Hans brought it up. I mean, how do we communicate with people in the financial world, people in the legal systems? I mean, we don't inter interface with them, but we we have to bring this into the classroom too because we're all in this together. And uh, you know, what you said yes, there's electricity that has been resolved, water. The next thing is uh, air quality. That's gonna it's affecting us big time now. And, and I think we need, it's, yes, there are technical issues that need to be resolved, but at the same time, we need to address policy. And, we're, and we don't participate in that. Uh, I'm, uh, and you, we have 100 senators in the U.S. that I know only one is an engineer, which happens to be to, from New Mexico, which is a mechanical engineer. And, and uh, he's a great partner that we have, but he's the only one in the Senate. Okay. So, so you know, these are some of the challenges that... I'm going, to, I'm going to read a few comments from the participants, and uh, and then after that we have we'll have to take a little commercial uh, break for uh, introducing you to Weave 2019 and Money uh, Member of the Executive Committee from uh, uh, from IFIS will join me in that. But I'm going to go through a few comments from the participants and have re have Ramiro in, uh, inter uh, react to that or respond to that. We got Mauricio from Granted Design saying congratulations for promoting such an important topic and indicate some of its intricacies. However, in tackling such a complex issue, we need some integrative subjects to add to this curriculum. What subjects do you feel can be used in engineering course, schools? And that's something I'm sure you've already been discussing about. Can you give some examples of one or two subjects that you can add to the uh, engineering schools? Amira? Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we are working together with many un universities uh, uh, we want to create like a minor, uh, and and the best way to learn is is like get getting an an executive MBA. It has to be case studies. This is the best way to learn from practical cases that can be shared, and and this is why we want the community to be large. And I want to use IFES here because we need to share cases from all over the world. You know, we mentioned that. The electricity has been sold here, but in other parts of the world, no. So let's address these issues and let's look at the different cases that we can, so we can learn from and and then uh, and try to avoid conflict or let's try to avoid re reinventing the wheel. So yeah. So let's, uh, these are problem. the type of courses that we're thinking. And again, we want the courses to be international. This is something that the, court, the group said. I want to learn from Ethiopia. It's not that I want to learn from just the U.S. It has to be courses that we can share. And, and this is and happy be global. And we can share them online, blended. It can be kind of a blended courses, which we can maybe develop exactly. and online through this community. Okay, Ra Rama Ramakrishna has a quick comment to make, but before that, I'll read one more comment from Jerry McMahon, McCann, saying that he appreciate Hans Hoy's comments regarding the dialogue between engineers and non-engineers. As a practicing peace-building engineer, I find this to be one of the biggest early state challenges in peace engineering. Uh, so, so let me go on to Rama. Uh, you, you had a quick comment, and then we'll move on to the other comments. Yeah, a quick comment about the global mindset. I think that's one of the key things that uh, you all we all agree on. But one of the challenges I found in the U.S. especially is that you know when you talk about people not having clean water to drink, etc., and here you just turn on the tap and you let it run for a while before it becomes cold enough for you to drink, or, and so on. So we are not sensitized to that uh, as much. But I think things are changing, especially because of you know recent. Uh, you know, climate change issues and uh, Puerto Rico, et cetera. So now it's now it's hitting home and in the backyards. So I think that's when students and uh, communities can realize, hey, this is not a problem 10,000 miles away. It's right here in our own backyard. And I found also to connect with the Native American communities here in Arizona, in Arizona that there are issues that are similar, not access to electricity, not access to clean water, et cetera. So one of the mantras that I use for this is that, you know, when you see the world at home, you can be more at home in the world. So I think that's uh, that's kind of a thing that you can use for uh, educational uh, uh, like kind of platform. Yep. Great. So Thani from India says that you know, there are many. From, uh, Thank you, Rama. Yeah, thank, Thani from India says there are many issues offering global faculty development programs. Which, which are very similar to peace engineering. So I think that's, again, it goes along the lines of discussion that we're having, that perhaps IFES, under the IFES umbrella, we can promote, develop, and uh, and uh, such courses which can be delivered, in fact, using this uh, this medium of online 
uh, process, uh, and 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 so maybe one can we can maybe think of at least one, make a small beginning with one course, uh, and 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 again somebody also asked, was asking the same connection between between, between peace engineering and grand challenges. I think definitely uh, it's all part of the same uh, umbrella. Uh, so that's that's great. So let's mm -hmm. see. yeah. Any any other uh, Ramiro comments before I move on to VIT Chennai, uh, week 2019. Any more comments you want to make about how we take this forward? Yeah, we, will, we need to continue the dialogue. So please, uh, you want to contact me directly or through Hans. We want to expand expand this dialogue. Uh, we will be producing, uh, we're setting up a website where we will be announcing what are the different kinds of activities and, and then and also inviting people to join us so you can pick and choose how you want to join wait i'm going to get back to uh, my screen here and yeah, yeah. this this is this just started in november so this is going pretty fast thank you for, for every, everybody thank you yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go into the website for weave 2019 a little promotion for that uh, we can talk about that and it's kind of, again related to what we just talked about right now so the you know if you go to weave uh, uh, you know, weave2019.org, weef2019.org, and I'm going to ask my good friend Money uh, to say a few words about this conference, and then we can walk you through the uh, through the website if it uh, shows up soon. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Okay, Money, I have unmuted you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, Krishna, thank you, Ramaria. Wonderful uh, talk on peace engineering. In fact, uh, even in Indian subcontinent. We talk about more of clean air, clean energy, clean water. Okay, so your topic gives a kind of thing, and uh, that particular in, uh, message has to th spread uh, towards uh, our region, especially Indian subcontinent of Asia. And also, you talk about more of uh, the mindset of the engineers has to change because today we talk about more of uh, innovations. It's only uh, technology innovation, other only social innovation. In fact, uh, most of the panelists are telling about uh, more of uh, social innovations where. Uh, they can solve the real problem faced by the uh, people. Uh, wonderful, it's a holistic uh, uh, talk, and in fact, I can say you define a system, so the so-called peace engineering, and you define the process, uh, and you are expecting all the engineers uh, across the globe as you know in the process. End of the day, we can see the real excellence, or they see we can see the results, uh, which is helpful to the society at large. Thank you, thank you, Romario, for your wonderful uh, talk. In fact, again, uh, I'm uh, welcoming all of you for our. Uh, Weep 2019, uh, it's the ninth uh, uh, edition of our Weep under uh, IFES. It's going to held at uh, Chennai, the one of the uh, most uh, vibrant uh, uh, state of South India, uh, where we have got uh, uh, excellent uh, education institutions as well as uh, we have got other uh, industry uh, and those things are there. In fact, uh, we are going to have a very big gathering. In fact, uh, this is a unique gathering of our Weep 2019 in the Indian subcontinent. Thanks to Romario as well as Michael Hare, as well as Professor Hans and uh, Krishna for their uh, support. Uh, and, uh, they are given uh, a kind of opportunity for Indian, uh, especially VIT and uh, EPSI, the Engineering Promotion of India, which has got uh, almost more than uh, 5,000 uh, education institutions part of that particular EPSI. And uh, it is going to be a very big uh, gathering for us and also the topic of this particular uh, event is also Disrupt engineering education for system development. In fact, uh, this is also on par with your uh, uh, talk, what you today has given the peace engineering and uh, especially it was the SDG, the sustainable development goals, the 17 what you have given with respect to American National Society of Engineering and those things. So it's going to be a very big gathering and I expect all the uh, participants who is here and uh, please do come and do participate. There are a lot of options are there as well as uh, we are going to have a, the Global Students Forum is also there. It's going to we will be this time we'll, uh, we are going to get almost 200 uh, participants uh, across the globe as well as within uh, india also we are going to get some more uh, participants are there i expect a lot of participation as well as uh, your uh, presence will make a very big gathering be a very big uh, value addition for our indian subcontinent towards the promotion of engineering education so let me walk you through this yes, website sir. and and you might want to talk about it all while i'm I'll add to that uh, money as i walk them to the website you know, so here, here is the information on the, uh, you, know, you can go to the website, the venue, 
Uh, it's a beautiful uh, ITC Grand Chola Hotel. I think you'll really enjoy that. It's one of the best hotels in the world. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, you might have... Yeah. One of the top hotels. And it's so, a seven-star hotel. It's, uh... Yeah, it's a seven-star. Oh, my God. I didn't know there was something like that. <laughs> okay. So so this is the home, it's the home page. It's so if you need a welcome letter, you have to under the, welcome, yeah. under the general information. You can learn more about it in the theme and the committee and the participating organizations. Uh, the yeah. program, you know, content is, is evolving. It's not all complete yet, but it's evolving. And, and I, several people on this uh, panel today are going to be there, like uh, Bill Williams and uh, uh, various other folks, Verama Ramakrishna will be there. Important, very important for all of you. This is a, it's a call for uh, fall abstracts. And, and let me just go walk through that just, just a minute. Call for abstract, workshop, submission, etc. So this is, um, you know, you, you must, uh, you know, keep in mind that, uh, that these you know, abstracts have to be, reviewed and and so there are deadlines and you have to keep the deadlines in mind and there are you know, themes i think the, the 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 end of june is the deadline for submitting abstract so so you must uh, you know you must keep that in mind and we hope to see many many uh, you know, abstracts and papers from the eifs community uh, coming into this uh, this uh, this abstract submission into into the abstracts so please uh, please do that because the success of this depends on that uh, there's a submission online abstract submission right here and, and so you can go in there and uh, and you can uh, get um, you know, get get more familiar with it. Again, there's a deadline for this. I think it's June 30th. You have to uh, get that done. We must get uh, you know, large numbers of participation in there. So let's see. We have registration. Uh, why attend? Uh, you can do online registration. And so the if you go in there, you'll get some idea what the fee structure and everything is about. Uh, so again, you can do this online. It's all it's all ready to go. Uh, location, lodging detail, venue, lodging details, travel to India, uh, travel to Chennai, uh, visa, how do you get to go about getting a visa, you know, sponsors and exhibits, if you are uh, uh, one of the people who would like to sponsor and get some uh, you know, pub, um, you know, publicity for your own company because you are very much involved in your education, uh, please do that. Uh, and, and so Hans, you want to add anything to, uh, uh, to this publicity for, uh, for Weep? Brilliant job. Uh, for us, as you uh, know, this is an annual meeting and I want to, I hope to take this in terms of the global participation to a new level. And it's a pleasure to work with our VIT colleagues and Mani and, and Krishna. Uh, we bring together faculty, students are very, very important and please encourage in your respective community also, many of our corporate colleagues and friends and also government representatives. And we are in discussion also with colleagues and friends at the World Bank, for example, and uh, UNESCO to, to engage. So it really brings in the different components of our global community. I put up on the screen GEDC. You want to say a minute about GEDC? Well, what... What, what we have here is annually the Global Engineering Dean's Council uh, meets this year in Santiago, Chile, working with one of the, the top wonderful universities in Latin America. And Chile is uh, a very, very special country. I've had the chance to also live just as well as with India there. So it brings the deans globally, and the Global Engineering Deans Council and IFES uh, are very much interconnected. It's leadership, it's programmatic. This year we uh, we meet in two different places, India and Chile, and next year I plant the seed already. We'll meet in Cape Town, South Africa, both of us together, the IFES Weave community together with the Global Engineering Deans Council. But that uh, GEDC is for deans and rectors, the leadership of uh, universities, uh, as well as uh, our friends in the in the different uh, companies that we work with very, very closely. Fantastic. Thank you, Hans. I'll give Ramiro, our president of IFES, to have the last word, and then we'll say goodbye. Well, I, I want to thank you, Krishna, for organizing this. I think we need this is a great uh, mechanism to disseminate you know, thoughts, ideas, projects, even courses like you well mentioned. So uh, thank you, everybody, for participating and for giving me the opportunity to present this piece of engineering concept. Thank you, and I thank wish you, you all the best. Thank you, Ramiro, and thank you, Anna and Kyla.
you know, behind the scenes, thank excellent you, thank job thank you for uh, for all thank this, and you, look forward you. to seeing you once once every two weeks. And goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Good day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.